boys, the year is 2025. And if you're not using a large language model, you might be left behind. I'm a senior machine learning engineer at Twitch where I've been working there for the past four years. And today I wanna to give you my opinion and rank what I think are the best LLMs to use if you are a software engineer. So you don't have to be a genius to see that in the past just two years since 2024, even a bit of 2023, we've seen an absolute boom in the progress as of large language models. What started as just a company called OpenAI releasing some models that can do some pretty cool things have now become a full out business where different companies are now creating their own models and competing in what I think is probably the most competitive space in tech right now. And don't just take my word for it. You see, in Y Combinator, the latest batch, winter 2025, uh, a lot of people are throwing money at companies that work with AI. You can see Pig, an API for automating Windows apps with AI, AI-powered hardware system design software, real-time analytics and testing for voice AI agents, AI for executive search, AI platform enabling anyone to build and scale software businesses, making APIs just work for AI agents, AI co-pilot for building plan review and building code compliance. I mean, AI is everywhere. It's not going away. Are we in a bubble? Maybe, but the fact is people are throwing money into this business. Because whether we like it or not, AIs provide lots of pros. Now, yes, we know what the con is, but it can make us more efficient. The debugging is great. They can write code really fast. It obviously allows us to skip Googling and you know browsing through stack overflows. Uh, have rubber ducky sessions and just a lot of different things that LLMs help us as engineers make our jobs easier, okay? And so like I said earlier, OpenAI and ChatGPT really ushered in this new era with all their models starting with 3.5 and they have now the O1, O1 Mini, O3 Mini. And if you've explored different LLMs, you've probably seen Claude uh, from Anthropic, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And there's even companies that act as GPT wrappers, if you will, that allow you to choose from different models and allow you to have a faster experience such as Perplexity and even T3 Chat all have emerged as viable products to choose between different models to see which one fits your need better. And if things didn't get more complicated, the recent release of DeepSeek for DeepThink R1 has completely changed the game with how capable it is, as well as Alibaba also joining in the mix with their Quen 2.5 Max model and their own UI. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna omit any sort of data being stolen by a Chinese government. I don't know if that's true. All I'm kind of curious about is the capabilities of these LLMs when it comes to solving tasks that me, as a software engineer, may need help solving. And if you look at Twitter for this post from Dan Hendricks of all the different models competing on a humanities last exam, you can see all the different models from OpenAI. We have DeepSeek R1, Gemini from Google, Claude, and even Grok from Twitter, all competing to see which one is the best for the task. Uh, but a benchmark that I think is more viable for us in this video is the software engineering bench verified. Now, this is just one graph. I'm not gonna look too deep into it, but you can see the different results of all the different models. I mean, just look at all these models. Let me know which model you use in the comment section down below. Which one's kind of your go-to? Have you been kind of experimenting between different ones? I'm curious to hear what you have to say. And during this whole research, I actually found a really cool site called lmarena.ai, and it actually shows you all the models ranked. Now, I don't know the capabilities. You can see here, uh, coding, whether conversation contains code snippets. I think it's a lot of things go into this with their metrics and arena score. So take it with a grain of salt, but you can kind of see what they think the best ranked models are for the coding category. You can even see general overall, if you click this, is switch up the results with Gemini kind of leading the way and Furrow latest and DeepSeek R1 not falling too far behind, but really the coding category is the one that we are the most interested in. Yes, you could use this as really everything you need to determine what model you want, but I think there's something that this doesn't capture. And that is A, the speed of the models and the cost of the models and three, the availability of these models because all th I truly think all three of those with the actual capability of the LLM are crucial in determining what is the best model to use. 
And so with all of that being said, I've here developed my own ranking system as being the highest for some of the more common LLMs, including all the ones I mentioned earlier with IBM Watson taking the D tier. I don't really know any kind of suit or, or case why you'd use IBM Watson, to be honest. In the C tier, I have the Alibaba Quen 2.5 model. I do like that it's a free model. Uh, I like that it's pretty available, but I don't think the capabilities are quite year, uh, quite there yet, if I'm being honest. And in the B tier, we have the uh, OpenAI models, the O3 Mini and the 4.0. I truly think the new O3 Mini one is like the best definition of a mid model. Uh, it's quick, it's snappy, it solves tasks, but when it comes to the complex tasks, I think it kind of lacks in that department. It's also under a premium subscription of like 20 bucks a month, if I'm not wrong. And then we have Meta's uh, Llama model, which is open source and Gemini. And if you look at my rank, I have them as B tier, even though the Elam Arena has Gemini Experimental 1206 as their number one uh, model. And personally, for me, I just find kind of the UI very clunky. I find that it times out a lot. I get lots of server uh, errors with it. From what I can see, the capability is pretty nice. I don't really see it like blowing the my mind from what it's able to do. Um, but I like, you know, maybe I'm missing something, but from my personal experience, I find that the uh, 1206 experimental model, it's great, it's good. I wanna give it A tier, but right now everything around it kind of makes it a uh, lower tier. And then for Meta, the uh, Llama model, the only reason why I don't have it higher is truly because to run it, it doesn't have a dedicated UI to run. Again, you can use something like T3 chat to to run it and, and that could be good. Or you can go on something like huggingface.com to find the model you want and download it and run it locally. But I think that adds a, a layer of friction. I'm not saying it's like the hardest thing to do, but to get all the parameters for a model, like we're talking like, for example, R1 has 685 billion parameters to run that. You're gonna need like 30, 30 90s or something. And if we actually search uh, the Llama model by Meta, let's see if it shows up right here, it's 70.6 billion parameters, which could be ran on most machines, I think, but still not everybody has access to that kind of hardware. And then in the A tier, I have the O1. Uh, the only reason like, to be honest, I kind of want to put this in the B tier just because the Pro costing $200, I think is a little much, but it is a good model and then Anthropic. It kills me that the Anthropic model, uh, Claude 3.5 is not on the S tier anymore. I don't mind paying $20. I actually went from the GPT uh, kind of models to Claude uh, earlier last year, but lately I've seen the performance just completely get worse. Uh, a problem with Claude is there's also lots of instances where, you know, it's the model is not available. The length of the conversation gets long and it kind of loses its capabilities. And there's just a lot of like hardware issues that plague the Claude 3.5 model. Although I will say, uh, I hope this tweet again, I hope Anthropic has something cooking 3.5, still staying strong with whatever they fed it. I do hope that a new Anthropic model comes out for Claude 4 and completely uh, addresses the issues. And this all leads me to what I think is currently the best model to use with all things considered, and that is DeepSeek, DeepThink R1. It's completely free. They fixed the issue of it being unavailable. I think they just pushed a bunch of money to make it available wherever you are. It's really good. I like the reasoning model. It makes it very clear as to what's happening. And I've had a really good experience using Deep uh, DeepSeek, and I think I do recommend it for a lot of software engineers moving forward. And kind of going over everything once more, I think if we look at how Sam Altman, and this is, I think, I believe a verified account on Reddit is kind of addressing this, you can really see that DeepSeek really put a number on OpenAI's kind of dominance in the market. So from this question, let's address this week's elephant, DeepSeek. Obviously a very impressive model, and I'm aware it was likely trained on other LLM output. How does this change your plans for future models? Uh, it's a very good model. We'll produce better models, but we'll maintain less of a lead than we did in previous years. Totally kind of acknowledging that DeepSeek is a great model um, and it does add a lot of competition in the LLM space, which I, again, I think is the most competitive. 
And uh, I'm just going to quickly say that this is hilarious, that if you go into deep seek API docs and you go into the Node.js section, invoke the chat API, please install OpenAI SDK first. NPM, install OpenAI. And then um, you can see that you use their SDK, openai.chat.completions, and you put the uh, API deep seek API key, which is such a Chad move. They just use OpenAI's SDK. But that's it for this video. I definitely didn't want it to be any kind of doomer or gloomer video for this time. Uh, I didn't want to talk about how I personally think maybe AIs are getting close and close to replacing software engineers, which I don't necessarily think is the case. Um, but what I did want to say is what LLM I am currently using in my day-to-day -day operations, which one do I think is the best for the task that I'm doing? and including different variations like pricing, availability, speed, and just overall quality of the prompts. But I do want to know which LLM model are you using? Uh, do you, are you happy with it? Do you have any that you can recommend? Leave, let me know in the comment section down below. And I appreciate it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.